Hello, our next topic is all about oxygenation. Oxygenation is uh, very important sa mga patient natin because oxygen is our basic needs, our body's basic needs. So let's define different terms so we can understand ano ba talaga ang uh, ano mga dapat natin gawin as nursing assistant in providing oxygenation to our patient. So we have uh, hypoxia. Hypoxia means that your cell do not have enough oxygen. Okay. Then tachypnea. We already discussed it in our vital signs discussion. Tachypnea. Tachy means rapid or increase. So uh, it will be a rapid breathing, which is more than twenty breaths per minute. While bradypnea, on the other way around, is the opposite of the tachypnea, which is slow breathing, which is breathing less than 12 breaths per minute. Apnea, A for absence. It is lack or absence of breathing. It is lack or absence of breathing. Then, hypoventilation. It is a respiration. Hypo means slow. Respirations which are slow, shallow, and sometimes irregular. Hyperventilation are respirations which are rapid, deeper than normal. Okay. Testia, first letter is D, which means it's the patient have difficulty. Desnia is difficult, labored, and painful breathing. Cane stroke respirations are respirations gradually increase in rate depth they they then they are becoming shallow and slow breathing may stop for 10 to 20 seconds it's irregular respirations then orthopnea breathing deeply and comfortably only when sitting okay nakakahinga ka lang pag nakaupo may mga tao pag tinatawag nating orthopnic position yung mga tao na hindi sila nakakatulog nang naka flat yun yung mga nakaupo at naka 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 uh, dantay sa overbed table para makatulog. So ayun yung tinatawag nating orthopnic position. So pag sinabi nating nahihirapan siyang hinga pag naka-flat pero nare-relieve lang pag nakaupo ang tawag doon ay orthopnea. When we're talking about cosmos respiration, it is a very deep and rapid respirations. Very deep and rapid respirations. Okay. So, ano ba yung mga ways as nursing assistant para ma-meet natin yung oxygen needs nat ng ating mga patient? Okay. First and foremost, we have the positioning. Positioning is our main responsibility as nursing assistant because positioning doesn't require any training. Okay. It doesn't require any training. So positioning, if your patient is having difficulty breathing or dyspnea, okay, you position your patient, of course, semi-fowlers or fowlers position because this position will promote lung expansion. So your patient will breathe more easily and will breathe well. So, or we should position our patient into sitting position, leaning over a bed table or overbed table to breathe like of uh, orthopnic position next is deep breathing exercises deep breathing exercises hindi lang siya sagot sa mga para i i relieve natin or decrease natin yung anxiety ng patient but it can also expand your lungs and can also meet your oxygen needs so in deep breathing exercises the air should move into most parts of the lungs okay so you breathe into your breathe in with your nose and then you breathe out with your mouth so that is deep breathing exercises you can use also deep breathing exercises when you have pain okay when you have when you had operation okay just put a just put a pillow on your abdomen and then just take a deep breath Breathe in in your nose and then breathe out with your mouth. 
So we can also do coughing, okay? Coughing so we can remove the mucus. And this mucus, which is also we are calling as plema, okay? When we cough, <coughs> we are removing or we are expectorating the mucus from our body. And this mucus will block our airway. That's why we have difficulty breathing. So we should cough also. So deep breathing and coughing usually done every two hours while your, while your patient is awake. And next one is we are having pulse oximeter. Pulse oximeter, we already studied pulse oximeter in our vital signs. So we are using pulse oximeter just to check the oxygen saturation of our blood. Okay, so the normal uh, oxygen saturation is 95 to 100%. Next is the oxygen therapy. We have different devices we are using uh, for oxygen therapy. We have the nasal cannula, we have the simple face mask, the partial rebreather mask, we have the non rebreather mask, and we have the venturi mask. Okay, let's take a look. The nasal. Nasal cannula we are using for those patients who have very less difficulty of breathing. And for those patients who want to eat, if they are with facial mass, okay, they cannot eat with the facial mass. So we are shifting the facial mass into nasal cannula so we can so they can eat. Okay. This is the facial mass. We have the partial rebreather mass. We have the non-rebreather mass. Okay. You will notice that the partial rebreather mass and the non-rebreather mass have bag. Okay. The difference is the oxygen that is being supplied in this kind of uh, devices. Okay. Non-rebreather mass have mas malaki yung oxygen na bin, binibigay ng non-rebreather mass compared sa partial rebreather mass. Okay. This is the venturi mask. Venturi mass is the most accurate oxygen delivery among all of these devices. Why? Because you will see in this picture, okay, meron siyang color coding. Okay? It depends kung ilang oxygen yung in order ni doctor. For example, 2 liters lang. Papalitan niya tong color na to, itong tube na to. So, 2 liter yung oxygen na papasok sa katawan. Pag gusto mo naman ng 4 liters, papalitan din nila ito ng ibang color. So this is the most accurate oxygen delivery sa lahat ng to. So oxygen flow rates, when giving care and checking the person, always check the flow rates. Yung flow rates, yun yung ina-adjust natin kung 2 liters ba, 3 until 15. So, tell the nurse at once if it's too high or too low. When we are doing rounds for our patient, we're checking vital signs. And we notice that the oxygen is too high or it's too low. And your patient have difficulty breathing or your patient is like having a feeling of drowning, nalulunod. Because masyadong mataas yung oxygen, we should always inform the nurse or the respiratory therapist. Okay. Question. If our patient, if we... Uh, discover our patient is having difficulty breathing. Our nurse is not there, not available because they are on other patients and we are only the one we can give uh, oxygen or not. Actually, in this situation, emergency situ situation, we can start oxygen. Okay, there, There's no harm in giving oxygen to our patient. Just start oxygen one to two uh, liters and then you inform the nurse and then every uh, the nurse will do the needful okay you just start the oxygen at one to two liters and then you inform the nurse because there's no harm in giving oxygen in emergency situation so what we are the what are the things we need to do to make uh, for oxygen safety. First is you do not give oxygen. You assist the nurse in providing safe care. But I, as I've told you, if it's emergency situation and the nurse is not around, so we can give oxygen, but in a low, we can start in low flow rates. 
Then, always check the oxygen level when you are with or near person using oxygen systems, okay? If it's high or low. Then, follow the rules for fire and use of oxygen. So, if your patient is smoking, we always instruct our patient not to smoke inside the hospital or inside the room because we have built-in oxygen. So, we, we can have fire if you are smoking here. Then, Never remove the oxygen device. If your patient have pulmonary problem, respiratory problem, cardiovascular problem, always keep the oxygen device near the patient because maybe uh, accidentally or maybe suddenly our patient will have difficulty breathing. So at least our oxygen device near to the patient. Make sure the oxygen device is secure but not tight. Okay, it should be secure but not tight because it will cause more difficulty breathing if it's tight. Check for signs of irritation. Usually, if you're putting a mask or nasal cannula into your patient, they can have irritation under the ears or here in the nape. So we should always check this uh, uh, site because maybe this is where uh, pressure ulcer might develop. So we should always check regularly. Then, Check for signs of irritation from the oxygen. Then keep the face clean and dry when the mask is used. Never shut off the oxygen flow unless it's indicated. Do not adjust the flow rates unless allowed by your state. Okay. Then tell the nurse at once if your flow rate is too high or too low. So when you're doing rounds, always check if, if the flow rate is too high and it's too low. And check also your patient. Okay, if you see your patient have difficulty breathing, of course, the maybe the oxygen flow rate is slow. Or if your patient have uh, having hyperventilation, it means na nalulunod siya, mataas masyado yung oxygen. So you should inform the nurse. Then tell the nurse at once if the humidifier is not bubbling. The humidifier, guys, it is the one with the water. The reason why it's not bubbling, maybe there's no water. So you should change it, okay? Or you should, uh, there is humidifier which is disposable. So you get another new humidifier. Then secure tubing to the person's garment. Follow the agency policy. Make sure there are no kinks in the tubing, okay? Bakit? Dahil pag may kinks sa tubing, of course, hindi papasok yung oxygen sa patient. Then make sure the person does not lie on any part of the tubing kasi magbablock din yung oxygen tubing. Then report any signs of hypoxia, respiratory distress, or abnormal breathing. Ibig sabihin, lumalala yung condition ng patient or hindi nakaka-receive yung patient ng enough oxygen. Then give oral hygiene as directed. Ang oxygen, once nilagay mo sa patient, Okay, nagko-cause siya ng dryness sa mouth or sa oral cavity. So we should always give oral care to our patient. Let them rinse their mouth or brush their teeth after having this oxygen therapy. Make sure the oxygen device is clean and free of mucus. If your patient is having a lot of mucus, like asthmatic patient, like uh, COPD patients, they have a lot of mucus. So we should always clean the oxygen device, okay? Because it will be a ground for microorganisms to grow. So we should always clean them. Next is incentive spirometry. Incentive spirometry is this, okay? Incentive spirometry, we are using it after operation. So our lungs will be, if we're having general anesthesia, okay, to, to expand our lungs again, we are uh, using this incentive spirometry, okay? So, there is a ball here, okay? And then you should use this, this one, this pipe. So, you should inhale and then you should exhale. So, this ball, okay, if your lungs is expanding well, it will meet and it will increase. If your lungs, will, it's not expanding, okay, you will just meet the lowest point. So you should always do it regularly so you should you your lungs will be expanding. Then
sputum samples as nursing assistant we are bound to get the sample okay for of sputum for sputum tests for sputum cultures so what is the best time or when is the best time to collect this sputum culture okay the best time is in the morning okay ano ang i-instruct natin sa patient before tayo kumuha ng sputum culture we should instruct them ma'am sir you should uh, you need to rinse your mouth with water okay only water don't rinse it with any mouthwash or any uh, toothpaste because it will alter the the microorganisms in your mouth okay so you just tell them ma'am you rinse your mouth with only water early in the morning okay what are respiratory supports and therapies we are using for our patients we have the uh, oropharyngeal we have the endotracheal and we have the tracheostomy tube okay when we're telling uh, when we're talking about artificial airways it is the airways we are giving to our patient okay to make the airway patent open and unblocked okay intubation is means an inserting an artificial airway for our patient so we have the oropharyngeal we have the endotracheal and we have the tracheostomy so this is the oropharyngeal we have the endotracheal oropharyngeal oro means oral until pharynx only we are talking about endotracheal through the mouth until to the trachea trachea so it's endotracheal and the best uh, way to give oxygen or to give uh, uh, artificial airway for our patient is the tracheostomy okay tracheo means trachea and then ostomy means surgical incision so they are giving incision or they are uh, putting an incision onto your trachea to make you breathe Okay. This is the part of your tracheostomy tube or TT, tracheostomy tube. Okay. Why we need to study this one? Because as nursing assistant, we can help the nurse in giving tracheostomy care. We can help the nurse in giving tracheostomy care. Okay. So this is the inner cannula. This is the fenestrated face plate, the outer cannula, okay, the shaft, fenestration, the cuff, and the balloon. Okay. We should always check the balloon if it's inflated. If it's deflated, okay, there's possibility that it can be removed. So it should be always inflated. This inner cannula is the one we are cleaning during tracheostomy care. Okay, this one, it is being blocked by the mucus or the plema. Okay, so that is the one we are brushing and we are cleaning the inner cannula. Okay. So assisting with tracheostomy care, usually we are doing tracheostomy care daily or every 8 to 12 hours or PRN. Okay, so 8 to 12 hours or PRN. Cleaning the inner cannula to remove mucus and keep the airway patent, okay? That's why we are cleaning or we're doing tracheostomy care to make the airway patent because if it's blocked with the mucus, the patient, we can, they cannot breathe well. Then the nurse tells you what cleaning agent is needed. Usually, normal saline, okay? Nowadays, we are only using normal saline. We are just rinsing the inner cannula to a normal saline so it will be the inner cannula will be clean hydrogen peroxide we are using it before but nowadays we are only using normal saline cleaning the stoma to prevent infection and in the skin stoma is the one okay or the surrounding skin the one you uh, they made the, the operation. Okay, kung saan sila nag-opera, yung butas, nililinis din yung surrounding areas. No? To prevent infection and skin breakdown. 
Then we're applying also Velcro ties, okay, and collar to prevent infection. So later on, I'll upload uh, how tracheostomy care will be done. Suctioning. Suctioning airway it is a process of withdrawing or sucking up fluid or secretions. Process of withdrawing or sucking up fluid or secretions. Kung ang pasyente nyo masyadong maraming plema, okay? Nagsasuction tayo para mag-prevent na mag-block yung secretions niya sa airway na magiging cause ng paghirap niya ng paghinga. So, meron tayong two ways or three routes on paano tayo nagsasuction. Meron tayong oropharyngeal sa mouth hanggang sa pharynx. Meron tayong nasopharyngeal sa nose hanggang sa pharynx. And we have ET through the tube na pinapasok natin sa, dito sa mouth or dito sa tracheostomy tube. So, ano-ano yung safety measures when we are assisting in suctioning? First, we need to review the procedure with the nurse. Then, know what you are to do. You are to do report coughing and signs on symptoms of respiratory distress. They signal the need for suctioning. Then, suctioning is done as needed, not on schedule. Okay? Hindi mo pwedeng suctioning yan kung gusto mo lang ang pasyente. Pag marami siyang plema, doon mo lang siya isasuction. Then, follow standard precaution or bloodborne pathogen secretion. So, dapat mag-wear ka ng proper PPE depende sa case ng patient mo. Kung ang patient mo may contact transmission, so dapat yung mga PPE na pang-contact transmission ang i-wear mo. Kung ang patient mo merong PTB or airborne precaution siya, so dapat naka N95 ka. Then, when you're doing suctioning, it should be sterile technique, okay? You need to wear a sterile gloves, not a clean gloves in doing suctioning. Then, the nurse tells you the catheter size and type of catheter needed. If too large, it, it can injure the airway. So, dapat sakto lang. Kung anong catheter meron ang pasyente, ganun. Kung anong tubing or... Uh, respiratory support, kung anong size ng respiratory support niya, dapat tugma dun sa catheter size. Kasi pwedeng masira yung airway, yung respiratory support or tubing ng patient mo kung hindi tama yung catheter mo. Then, needed suction supplies and equipment are kept at the bedside. They are ready when the person needs suctioning. They are ready when the person needs suctioning. So, dapat nasa bedside lang yun. Hindi kukunin mo pa sa store. Dapat nakalagay sa bedside ng pasyente. Anytime na, mangy na pangailangan ng pasyente for suctioning, mabilis mo na lang siyang makukuha. Then, suction, it, uh, suction is not applied while inserting the catheter into a lower airway. When suction is applied, air is suck, suck out of the airway. So, pag maglalagay ka ng suction, hindi mo muna siya, pag, ng suction catheter, hindi mo muna siya pipindutin dun sa suction niya. Bakit? Habang nilalagay mo. Kasi nasa suction niya yung airway mismo. Dapat, ilagay mo muna siya, okay? Pag nandun ka na sa mga secretions ng patient, tsaka mo pipindutin yung suction para makuha yung, uh, masak yung secretions ng patient. Then, the catheter is inserted smoothly. This helps prevent injury to mucous membrane. A suction catheter or cycle for adults take no more than 10 to 15 seconds. So, ganun lang kabilis. Hindi pwedeng sobrang tagal mo siyang isasuction kasi mawawala ng oxygen yung patient. So, it should always be 10 to 15 seconds. Then, for infants and children, the suction cycle is no more than 5 cycles or 5 seconds only. A suction cycle involves inserting the catheter, suctioning, or removing the catheter. The catheter is cleared with sterile water or uh, saline between suction uh, cycle. So pagkatapos mo na suction mo yung secretions, dapat lilinisin mo yung catheter ng normal saline. Then, nurse waits 20 to 30 seconds bago ka mag-start ulit ng isang suction para hindi maubusan ng oxygen ang patient. Yung iba, 
na mga hospitals, they are requiring 60 seconds or one minute bago ka ulit mag-suction. Then, a suction catheter is passed no more than three times. So, sa isang cycle, isang suctioning, dapat tatlong beses o no more than three times ka lang magsasuction. Okay? Because injury and hypoxia are risk when suction catheter is passed pag masyadong maraming beses. So, dapat no more than three times. Check for your vital signs if you're doing suctioning. So, you'll know anong mga dapat or ano yung mga nangyayari sa patient mo. Then, always check for your oxygen saturation. It should be 95 to 100%. Mechanical ventilation, so ayan, yung machine, ina-attach siya sa patient mo to give your patient uh, respiratory support or an oxygen. Okay, we have chest tube. If your patient is having air and your patient is having air or blood in your lungs, okay, so they can be or they can give the patient or they can drain the fluid and blood into the lungs and heart and esophagus this is the chest tube okay so these are the respiratory therapies or support we are using in the hospital